Hello everyone and welcome back to Kali Call of Darkness. This time with season 3 episode 4. The mysterious connection between Amrit and the Mala is explained. Thank you. Let's see if I ever said anything right about this. And Kiran is about to face the supernatural. Oh, uh-uh. Amrit, if you touch my baby brother, we're gonna have some serious problems. Episode 4. Betrothed. I'm sorry? Betrothed? Before Amrit woke up, I quietly got out of his bed. He was sleeping peacefully, turned on his side with his back to me. He had trusted me completely, allowing himself to be so vulnerable before me. Kindness of goddess. Soft, sleepy, vulnerable, weak. I could kill him right this moment, he wouldn't even understand what's happening. And if the Dubais lost their main hair, all my problems would be solved. I suddenly felt scared by the fact that I was seriously considering this. Girl! The ideas I get first thing in the morning. Wait, wait, Amala. You care about him, right? He's becoming dear to me, and I couldn't harm him. Not even for the sake of family and power, right? Okay. So I'm starting to see that goodness of Kali. That's not actually being a good person. If you have more good points than dark points, then you are more ruthless. Yikes. The question should have had an obvious answer, but strangely I didn't feel that way. On this goddess path, you can be quite cruel. Yes, I noticed that. Thank you. I know what I have to do in the next uh, playthrough. <laughs> Carefully not to make a sound, I got dressed and went back to my room. For some time, I found myself just lying on the bed, staring at the ceiling. I had to find the strength to get through that day, and the one after. Uncertainty scared me. The sect and what they told me about Kali Yuga, I think... I think they were telling the truth. Like, I think that they actually believed that. Everything makes sense. The fact that Rita Shiva is here to help provi uh, proves it. It took me a few minutes to calm down. Kindness of goddess. Girl, you're ruthless if you have kindness points. Madhu knocked on the door. She had brought me breakfast and change of clothes. Would you like some food, mistress? Yes, but don't call me mistress. I'm just a guest here. Madhu blinked in surprise. Oh, I thought yesterday the young master... I'm sorry, I did what I was told. Wait, yesterday the young master? What? Please excuse me, what did you say, Amrit? She ran out of the room as if she had never been there. I didn't even have time to get angry. Without wasting time, I had bre quick breakfast and changed my clothes. Okay. Ooh. Okay, and... Hmm. I don't even know at this point. You know what? I'm gonna go with beige. Like, why not? Just, just, just go with this one. I didn't like any of these outfits, actually. <laughs> Kiran wasn't in his bedroom. I tensed up, but reassured myself with the thought that he must have just gone for a walk somewhere. Yeah, keep on telling yourself that, girl. After looking around the garden and a couple of living rooms, I reached the hall. Kiran was sitting on one of the sofas in the luxurious, spacious room. I've been looking for you all over the place. Why didn't you disappear without saying anything? We need to talk. For real. Not like yesterday. When you avoided all my questions. He looked at me from under his brows. Be honest. Are you actually comfortable here? If I got it right, we were in a room full of murderers yesterday. Mm-hmm. Kiran has some sense. And they torture people to sacrifice them. What the hell, Amala? Yes, it's cruel and scary, but they won't hurt us. Is that all you care about? That they won't hurt us? <laughs> but of course not. And I feel sorry for those who were killed. But that shouldn't stop me. Brilliant. That's super reassuring. <laughs> Honestly, Kiran. Kiran. Kiran is me. Kiran was clearly on edge. He didn't even try to hide how upset he was as he usually did. I don't recognize you, Mala. Usually you're so calm and rational. But here, it's like you've got a one-track mind going along with this without any hesitation. And for what? I feel like I finally found myself and where I belong. 
Things seem clearer here and so familiar. I'm immersed in my native culture. No one looks at me weirdly when I wear a sari. Do you understand? All my life I've been searching for the pay piece that was taken away from me. And I found it right here. Do you really think these people from the sect won't hurt you? That. Despite the fact that they kill and torture people in the name of a god, the imaginary goddess. Honestly, Kiran. Kiran, we love Kiran. Kiran's raised voice echoed through the hall, but I remained calmly. She's real. That sadly is true. Yeah. He froze as if it suddenly hit him that everything he told me was useless, and that I just went insane. Are you being bloody serious right now? That sadly is not a joke. Kiran. But even after knowing that she's real, I would still react like Iran. <laughs> oh my god. Ranking his fingers through his hair, he looked away. He had an annoyed, resigned expression on his face. Do you think I've lost my mind like grandma? Did you not? What else am I supposed to think? I didn't want to tell you anything, but you're a grown-up, so it's probably time. I don't want to scare you, but if you know the truth about our family and the sect, then you should know this truth too. I looked at my hand where Ratan's Mendy used to be. Most of it had faded away long ago, and I had just painted over it when I felt like it, but several of the original Mendy's patterns were still visible on my skin. They couldn't be removed unless I wanted to. Rubbing my skin hard, I thought to myself, this might be a dangerous trick, but at least we're at the Dubai's mansion. Who, if not them, can control the booze? Ratan. Also, Ratan is looking after us. A girl. I hope you're not trying to do what I think you're doing. I'd rather scare Kiran with the sight than lead, let him think that I've gone mad. It would be far worse for him to think that, like everyone else in the family, I'm going to abandon him soon. I erased the patterns, and soon the remnants of the Mendy disappeared. What was all that about? Right, because as soon as she doesn't have them, they're gonna come for her, right? I looked around cautiously. Stay close to me. I've learned to protect myself against these creatures. Creatures? Mmm. Kiran. Independence. Let's go. It was quiet for the first few minutes. Kiran looked at me anxiously. You're starting to freak me out. Honey. You haven't seen nothing yet. The smell of incense and rotten flesh suddenly hit my nose. Oh, I haven't smelled this in a while. Ugh, what is the smell? Oh, right for it. The space began to change. They're all coming. An airy swarm green light enveloped the room. Kiran looked around, confused by what was happening. What the... what the hell? Long skeletal arms came bursting through the walls and the silhouettes of dozen of people appeared from thin air. They were howling and quietly whispering something. Kiran, who had been standing up to that moment, sat back down scared. His horrified gaze darted from one figure to another. Girl, you did that to yourself. And you brought my poor baby with it. My poor Kiran! He's starting to panic. I think he's had enough of the show. Okay, breathe, stay calm. As Amrit said, I can control this. How did I do it last time? I calmed down and listened to my breathing. I'm the stronger one here, not them, because I'm alive. And respect, let's go. Closing my eyes, I concentrated on myself. It didn't feel that hard anymore. Each time I did it, I became more confident. Some of the shadows had been crawling out of the wall, suddenly froze. Kiran noticed it and seemed very impressed. You've already stopped the spirits by yourself, so you have the skills to fight the supernatural. Let's go. But it was not within my power to stop them all. Looking at me again, he suddenly turned pale. M Mala? There are so many of them behind your back. Several more of the dead gathered behind him. Some looked like booths, others were just faceless shadows. I needed to do something and fast, so I got ready to attack them. Attack them all, girl. Attack them all. Don't be afraid. They can't get to you. What the hell is going on? I threw myself in front of my brother, boldly looking straight at the spirits and at the flashing lights where their eyes should have been. Stay back or I'll tear you apart. No, don't protect me. I should be the one protecting you. Honey, but you don't know anything about how to fight them. It's okay. Kiran tried to push me away, but I wouldn't let him. You don't know how to deal with them, that. And you do? Apparently I do. I remember the words of the Black Tantra by heart. 
this whole universe was born by let's go and let's go with the respect points <laughs> this whole universe was born by you this world was created by you in the end you always devour it you manifest as a destructive force dark mother mother of strife mother of time what the <laughs> same kiran you're ready to fight to the end, Giran is impressed, thank you. Many of the shadows began to back away, but not all of them were booths, others remained still. Left without protection, I felt naked and vulnerable in front of all these creatures. Anxiety rose in my stomach as I noticed that the haze was getting thicker and something more powerful, scarier than just the booth was appearing was approaching Giran and me. It was a strange feeling, but I could clearly sense someone dangerous getting closer and closer. I was left without protection for a moment, and all the creatures for miles around rushed here. Amrit will kill me if he finds out. Ratan. <laughs> Ratan is also not having it anymore. Kiran didn't even notice him, but I turned my head in Ratan's direction, mouthing, Help. Ah. <laughs> uh. Nah, Ratan is gonna kill you first, and then Amrit's gonna kill you. He quickly realized what was going on. Ratan held out his arm, squeezing his fingers as if he was trying to choke someone. Leave. Let's go, Ratan! The creatures took a few steps back and then disappeared into thin air, obedient like puppies. <laughs> Not puppets. When it was all over, Kiran sank to the floor in shock. My poor child, look what you did to him, you little bitch. His mind, just like mine once, was in complete turmoil. Without wasting time, Ratan scolded me. Thank you. What happened? Why did you erase your protective Mendy? What was going through your mind? What if I hadn't gotten here in time? Ratan, Ratan. Yeah, he's not having it. I didn't want to talk back or make excuses, so I told him the truth. I knew you or Amrit would be somewhere nearby. You can always rely on that. I might be busy with something else. I never found out what kind of creature was approaching. It would definitely wasn't Ratan. He has a different energy. Who wants to hurt me? Ratan crouched down next to Kiran, carefully examining him. Look what you did to my poor child. Are you alright? Ratan! I love Ratan. Yes, I just... I didn't expect that. You'll get used to it soon. Even though you're a man, you still possess many of the dispositions of the bazoos. Dispositions? Are you talking about the visions? The visions? Your visions, Mala? Is that what's happening to me? Mm, Kiran! Oh, sadly it is. Uh, you're part of this family. Start getting crazy like all of us. Kiran tried to join the conversation, but he was completely at a loss. No, it's just that the members of the Dozen are the delicious morsels for tortured souls especially the bazoos but why wait so he doesn't have visions no and there's no way he could as i said he's a man <laughs> so only the women get tortured <laughs> that's great i hate this i sat down next to my brother so uh, honestly the bazoo men have uh they have a blessing let's just say it like that they don't have any <laughs> visions <laughs> Nothing at all. The women in the Bazoo family are always the ones being tortured. That's great. If he doesn't have visions, does that mean he just he's just going insane? Kiran, don't worry about anything. I'll try to find out. What is there to find out? It's obvious. I'm sick. No, you're not sick. If what just happened is what your visions look like, I see something completely different. Then what do you see? What exa Yes! What exactly do you see? I can't explain it. And you must be the Mr. Vaish that Yihaya was talking about. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're also part of this? Um, Part of this? He's more like a controller, like a dominator here. Ratan and I exchanged glances. Kiran knew everything. There was no turning back from him. Tell him. Tell him everything. He makes part of the family. Just tell him. And Mala, don't worry. I'll help with that, but we need to talk in private. Kiran, let me take you to your bedroom. You can take a moment there. I'll wrap some things up and then we'll go home. Fine. Kiran. Before leaving the room, I gave Ratan a grateful look. Kiran. As I was walking back to the hall, I ran into Vimal R and Rishi Dubai. Amala, good morning. How did you sleep after our meeting? 
Good morning. Fine, thank you. I had no idea what this sect was really fighting against. Fighting? Well, you could say that. We slowly moved further down the hallway. I didn't know where it led, but Vimal seemed to know his way. I hope you get used to this quickly and it won't scare you anymore. You need to gather support and regain your former influence. The place at the head of the dozen might be comfortable, but it's not so easy to keep. Traditions must be honored. If traditions dictate that the Basus and the Dubais must be obeyed, that's what must happen. Isn't that right? Things aren't as clear-cut as you think. Everyone has their own motives for staying in their place. Some do it out of love for the Dark Mother, and some, for example, want revenge. Revenge? Who would want to take revenge on me, and why? You have enough enemies, believe me. There's a lot of blood on the Dubai's hands. Oh, you have blood, Amala. I knew it! <laughs> no, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't know that part, but I'm gonna try and read between the lines and think that he's trying to tell us that uh, the Dubais were mainly the reason that the Bazoos family is almost rotten out. Like, they were kind of responsible because um, if they say the legends say that the Bazoos and the Dubais must be obeyed by the other dozens, then perhaps the Dubais uh, got... I don't know, power crazy and didn't want to share that power. They wanted to be the only ones that get obeyed by the dozens. And so they tried to rotten us all out, like the Bazoo family, so that there's no one left. So they had no choice but to obey only to the Dubais. It was, I was confused by his words. I looked questioningly at Reishi, but he was silent. Think about what I said. I'll go now, but I hope to see you again. When Vaima left, Rishi didn't follow him immediately. What was your father talking about? I'm surprised that you still don't know, but maybe it's for the best. Then Rishi also left. Amrit, what shady thing are you trying to pull again? I was alarmed by their words. Angry even. It all sounded strange, yet somehow vaguely familiar. Mm. As I was lost in thought, I turned my head to the side and stretched my neck. A half-open door caught my eye. Behind it, as I had guessed, there was an office. Devadas Dubai's office. I got here only because of Vimal, and this room probably holds the answers to all my questions. Just like Amrit keeps the information about the dozen in his library, Devadas might also be keeping something here. Should I take a risk? Hmm. Do we want to take a risk? Are we gonna take the risk? Yes. Take a look. Go in there, girl. Break everything. <laughs> Let me stop. I'll just take a quick look at his desk. I won't even touch anything. <laughs> Such lies. If anyone catches me, I'll pretend that I'm lost. <laughs> That's funny. What if there are names, addresses, or some information, important information? I'm mean, it runs the sect now, but I'm sure Devaras is not just a spec specter. A spectator. I took one sm uh, small step inside. Checking if the room was empty. All was quiet. Papers were neatly stacked on a beautiful, expensive desk. Pencils and pens were perfectly aligned. This level of precision says a lot. <laughs> it would have been foolish of me to expect to find a list of victims or a description of the sect's plans. No one keeps such things just out where anyone can find them. But I was looking for at least some detail. A clue. There's a lot of blood on the Dubai's hands. Your blood, Amala. What was Vimal talking about? Was he trying to scare me? Confuse me? Warn me? Nothing stood out. The office was very neat and didn't seem to provide my any insight into the owner's affairs. Next to a stack of papers, there was a calendar turned to October. There were two dates marked on it. At an interval of about two weeks, I saw something similar in Grandma's room. She marks the new moon and the full moon each month. I started flipping through the calendar. Two dates were marked on each page. It matches the phases of the moon. David has circled the same dates as my grandmother did, but there was something written, 
something else written next to one of the dates that month. Small print in a local language. Seven, the writers. So the seventh uh, victim is about to happen. I turned the page. November also had something on it. Eight, the innocent. You snuck into Devadas to buy his office and learn important information, okay? I copied everything on a piece of paper. I don't understand this, but there is no time to think. I took one of the blank sheets and a pencil from one of the neat rows and wrote down the dates. Your choice will affect the plot, okay. When I was done, I quickly left the office. Surprisingly, there was no one around. Normally, I would have thought it odd, but at that moment, I was too lost in my own thoughts. Going toward the reception hall to find Ratan, I noticed Amrit in one of the rooms. He immediately turned to me. Amala, I've been looking for you. Why is that? I mean, <laughs> well, here I am. What is it? There's something I need to talk to you about. Or if you want, we can skip the talking. No. <laughs> Just sit on my lap and make my day better. No. <laughs> What's wrong with your day? Nothing, but I can find a way to ruin it if I need it. <laughs> That's funny. I'd rather talk. That's funny. I was hoping you'd pick the other option. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. You're a push you're pushing your luck. Just because I agreed to be with you, it doesn't give you the right to do anything you want to me. That's a pity. I would like that. I know you do. You know what? Cut him some slack. Cut him some slack, girl. Be nice. Really? And what would you do if I were at your mercy right now? Uh-huh. Probably what you did last night. Hmm. There we go. And now we're talking. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry about that phase. Amrit slowly approached me like a predator hunting its prey. First, I do this. I love the blush. The blushing face is insanely cute. Beautiful. He pulled my hair behind my back, fixing it. Then he touched my shoulders, gently running his hands over them. He touched me as if he was appraising a work of art. I smiled faintly, keeping calm. Amrit observed my reaction. There, all done. You actually haven't done anything. <laughs> Is that so? I made you smile. Now I can admire you. Oh, <laughs> that was cute. Are you trying to be romantic? You don't know that, but I look at you very often. I like to watch you and think that such a woman is in love with me. Oh, The way he's like looking sideways at <laughs> the side eye. I don't know what you expect from me. Did you think I'd grope you in a corner at every opportunity? Yes. <laughs> Girl, you don't have to copy everything I say. Yeah, something like that. How crude and vulgar. I have other feelings for you, not just lust. Is that so true? To tell me something? Amrit's hand slid down to my waist as he spoke. He drew me closer to him. What kind of feelings are you hiding? Such a sarcastic and distrustful person doesn't deserve to know. <laughs> but this person is demanding you to answer. This person needs to be patient and understand that it's useless to demand anything from me. Oh, I remember. One can only ask nicely. Who came up with these rules, by the way? I don't play by anyone's rules besides mine. Exactly. The blush again appearing. He leaned toward me, almost covering my lips with his. I smiled when he froze just an inch away. We're not alone in the house. Someone could walk in any minute. Oh no, how horrible. <laughs> that... I love it. I don't care. That. Those who are not supposed to see us will close their eyes and walk away. Before I could answer, Amrit wrapped his arm tight around my waist, pulled me against him and kissed me. His other hand pressed on my chin so that I opened my mouth a little. His wet tongue traced my lips and slid inside. A moment ago, I was being sarcastic, telling him to control himself. But now I was melting in his hands, our conversation forgotten. It didn't take much for us to want each other. If this passionate kiss had lasted even a moment or two longer, I would have said to hell with pro property and thrown myself at him right on the sofa. His hands rooming my body, his teeth biting my lips, his ragged breath and his di dizzying scent. I just wanted to tease you a little bit now. You wanted to tell me something. 
Let's do that later. Amrit! No, tell me now. Somehow I found the strength to pull away from that irresistibly attractive man. Do you like to torture me? Yes. He gave me one last longing look before relenting. <laughs> I do. Fine. Let's talk about this. Amrit will think about you for the rest of the day. Let's go. Think about me. Keep on missing me. We turn around at the same time when we felt Ratan's presence. He appeared in the room and spoke, his voice emotionless. You're finally together. Amrit, you need to tell her. Stop playing games. Ah, uh, that was enough time for you to fulfill the agreement. Whether it worked or not, it doesn't matter anymore. We need to. We need her to make her decision as soon as possible. Yes, Mahadeva Rita Shiva. Amrit looked at me solemnly without a hint of mischief, which she very rarely did. He needs to tell me what. Dubai, I knew you were hiding something else from me. <laughs> That's funny. How could I not? I wouldn't want you to get bored of me too quickly. It's about the nature of our connection, Amala. Why are, you, why are we attracted to and feel each other so much? He held out his hand to me so that I would give him mine in return. Instant warmth flared up between us, something special, pleasant. People don't usually feel each other's moods, emotions, heartbeat, and presence. But there are ex exceptions, those who are promised to each other. <laughs> like I said, soulmates. A vow before the gods and the ritual that binds two souls tightly. Huh? The will of the gods is for us to be together, Mala. Do you mean married? Yes, walk hand in hand until the very end. Our union is essential so that many necessary things will happen. It was foretold long ago. My questions were finally answered and resentment washed over me. So all this time you knew who I was and what connected us? Not only that, I've been really looking forward to your arrival, Amala. But I... Why is this man like this anger... Girl, you are me. This girl literally is me. In a nutshell. This woman is me. Sometimes I could smack her. But, like, 95% of the time she's actually me. Completely me. In everything she does and everything she says. Girl, whoop his ass. Anger tighten in my chest. I... Thank you. Thank you. That's the choice I'm gonna pay. Slap him. Slap him. Slap this man! Slap this man! I said that the last season so many times. Smack him! Unable to restrain myself, I threw my hand back and slapped his face. Slap his face! That's that's all you deserve. That's what you deserve. He staggered from the impact. That. That. <laughs> that then? That. You don't play me like that. And you've been hiding this from me all this time? He touched his lips. There was blood on his fingers. Amrit looked at me angrily. A crazy, impulsive woman. Just like the rest of your family. You don't like my family? But you've been waiting so long for my arrival. Where is all your love gone? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god, love her. Go off, queen. No, so I'll look past this. This one time. Oh, this one time you're looking past it, huh? Spare me your generosity, that <laughs> mala. You certainly know how to spice up a relationship. <laughs> Amrit is displeased but impressed. He'll remember that it's better not to make you angry. Sir. It's not my fault. This was decided long before you and I were even born. I want to know all the details. To begin with, you had to answer an important question. There will be no more secrets after that. Amrit and Ratan stood in front of me. Oh, wow. Let's go. Oh, my God. Amrit's so fine. <laughs> Amrit's so fine. I'm sorry. I can't. Will you take us out? Will you help us fight against the approaching chaos and destruction? Will you join the Kalga, my betrothed? <laughs> oh, technically. Oh, now I understand. I mean, I've heard the word betrothed. But I forgot its meaning. A uh, betrothed is when you are promised to marry someone. In this context, it means that we were promised by the gods 
as in by fate, we were promised to one another. So we're literally soulmates. We were born to find one another, to fall in love, and to be together for all of our life. Now, not and he knew that and didn't tell us. I smacked him real quick. Let's go. They were looking at me, waiting for my answer. The answer that was behind everything. The answer that had left me to India. What was I supposed to say? All right, then. I finally was capable to smack his ass. Finally. Because that's just disrespectful at this point. And yeah. Many gems have been spent again in this episode. <laughs> Let me stop. Mm. But yeah, we finally were capable to smack him. And that was a beautiful picture from Ratan and Amrit. Yeah, let's see our answer for the next episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me in the comments below what you think was best. And I will see you in episode 5. Bye.